want to welcome you back to our Freshman 15 series where we connect with people in the know to make your college experience a success both personally and academically. This week, I want to tackle a subject we often overlook, study habits. Research done by the Office of Academic Advocacy at the University of South Florida revealed that 80% of study time in high school is accounted for by time in the classroom with the teacher. But this number drops precipitously in college where only 20% of our academic time is invested in a classroom with a professor. So what does this mean? In college, we have three times more unstructured study time than in high school. And in order to be successful, we need to learn to utilize this time effectively. For this discussion, I've invited another of our student leaders, Caleb, who serves as the Chi Alpha Club president at the Trinity River campus. Caleb, tell us a little bit more about yourself. All right, um, my name is Caleb Montano, and I have been a student at TCC, as particularly the Trinity River campus. Um, I've been going there for approximately three years now. Um, I have finally graduated with my associates over the summer and I am planning to transfer out hopefully to UNT or DBU um, either this next coming semester or the following semester. Caleb, I know that this has been a challenging week in your academics. So I want to start by thanking you for joining us for this conversation today. As I begin with, it is easy for us to look at studying as something that we do in class or at least during the semesters. So talk a little bit how, about how planning our schedule before the semester begins can help us be successful during the semester. A lot really goes into the scheduling process. Uh, for example, if you're, if you're already working a job, knowing your work hours will help you schedule those classes. Uh, the best part about college it's usually you get to choose your own classes and when they get and when they happen and for sure look at that syllabus the second that your teacher posts it up go look into it see what's expected of you they tell you when things are due make sure you write those down make sure you know when they are have a calendar like put it on your phone as a notification like a week in advance to make sure that you're keeping up with your homework you don't want to leave it to the very end procrastination is not the best thing to do i struggle with this sometimes and it is not fun to deal with so definitely make sure you you have those notifications on for yourself, making sure that you know, hey, there's homework coming up, make sure you have the time to study for that. And I, I agree. We need to learn early that procrastination is not our friend. It only leads to additional stress, which makes us less productive. Now, we need to make plans but also talk a little bit about our study environment. What do students need to consider when finding the best place or time to study? So what I usually do is whenever it's time to do my homework, I take it to the kitchen table and I sit it there. There's really nothing around me. Um, that's where I personally find it easiest for myself to do my homework. At school, sometimes you can find a place to, to work there. Um, if you're like bothered by a lot of crowded noises or whatever. At Trinity, we do have rooms specifically for studying. They're called study spaces. They have like a whiteboard table, a couple of chairs. That's a, like, that's just for you to study and not to get distracted. So those are really helpful for when I'm on campus to do that. Definitely make sure you are not distracted, that you're not putting yourself in a position where you could veer away from studying. And I definitely want to go where it's as empty as possible. And for me, that's the kitchen. So that's where I do it. What I hear you saying is that studying effectively begins by eliminating distractions, whether they are noises, things, places, or even people. But what about group study times? Since we can't avoid the people, what can we do to make these collective study sessions more effective? So with group studying, it can be a little bit harder. Find a time that works best for everyone and find a place that you can all go to that is relatively close to everyone as well. Definitely put away your phone. The phone is one of the biggest distractions that we have nowadays and focusing on the homework. Um, sometimes if you're with a really good friend, that could be a big distraction just because y'all might, you know, start talking about something else and they'll 
you'll go chasing rabbits and start talking about other things. So make sure that if you're that when you're in a group scenario, you have your you have your boundary set of putting aside the phone that you'll stay focused on the homework. If you're going to have any discussion at all, it should be about the homework. It's okay to have a little bit of fun sometimes, but then you have to get back to focusing and studying. That's what's the more important thing. That's why you're all gathered there. So when we need to study in a group, we should set good boundaries that keep the group moving forward and on track. That sounds great. What about class times? Since we have so much less time with our professors, how do we leverage this time to help us study more effectively later? Definitely show up early. There's nothing wrong with showing up early. Um, if time allows, get there 10, 15 minutes early in class. The best places to sit is in the front row or straight down the middle. You wanna be in view of the teacher. That helps a lot for you to focus on them and for them to focus on you as well. Um, and that's kind of an important interaction in learning is you want to be zoned in and you get the information that you need. I spend a lot of my time writing notes and I really try to keep my brain off of what any of what people are doing around me. Uh, write down as much as possible. Um, if something's off from the book, write that down. I try to focus on whatever the teacher's saying, whatever's on the whatever's on the screen and stuff like that. And right after class, I'm like, cool, I'm gonna eat and then I'm gonna go study. And I just pull out my notes and I start copying things or I'll just start like uh, seeing what the homework kind of looks like, things like that. And that's how I usually do that. You talked about going straight from class to studying, but I think most students are looking for a break from studying after class. So can you explain how this helps you study better? But I usually do that because it's fresh in my brain. Um, and again, like I mentioned before, attention span is pretty different for a lot of people. But once you have, once I have the information down, I want to go and drill it into my brain. Like I want to make sure that it's stuck in there. So I'll, I'll go straight from this class straight into studying. That way, it's still fresh in my brain. Um, I'm still able to remember some of those details that might escape me later, and I'll be able to write those down if I missed it. Things like that. That's why I usually go straight into it. It's definitely helpful for me to to do that so that I don't forget. Another aspect of studying addressed in many articles is the idea of active and passive studying. Briefly explain the difference and why developing active study techniques is so important. So the active studying side of things, that's usually where you are interacting. So that includes usually the time when you're with the teacher where they're saying something, you're writing it down, you ask a question, they answer that's active. Um, if you're not studying by yourself, if you're in a study group, you can ask them to ask you some questions, you know, have some flashcards or something like that. Those are the active ways of, of studying. The passive is usually what I do a lot of the time right before a test. That's just quickly reading over the notes that you have, um, like brushing over the book, right? You wanna make sure you get a quick glance of things right before the test. Um, they serve very different purposes. The active usually is to help absorb it, to, to absorb the information. The passive, it's, it's not as effective for a lot of people. It's just a quick glaze. Make sure you have everything. If you catch the thing really quick, you can pick that up instantly before the test, something like that. So they do serve very different purposes. In for scripture, me. we find the principle of spiritual discipline. How does this concept, spiritual discipline, relate to these ideas of removing distractions or refocusing ourselves during study times? So there's a lot of points in scripture where it's talking about self-discipline or self-control. Um, it is one of the um, fruits of the spirit where you take hold of your natural desires and you set them aside or you put them into God's hands. It's very important that you do that because you're able to focus on God and not focus on the distractions. It's basically the same when you're studying. You wanna make sure that you have all your distractions and you put them aside. The Bible also mentioned things about the rewards. Whenever you are disciplined in your spiritual life, there is a reward. If it's not earthly, then it's in heaven. Same with your homework. You continue as much as possible. You get a little bit distracted. Hey, that's fine. Make sure that you 
are able to turn your focus back onto it. That way you get them good grades that in the end you're able to re retain that knowledge so that in the long run, you can use that in your career. Caleb, thank you for being a part of this week's Freshman 15 and sharing these insights with us about effective study habits. I also want to thank everyone listening for allowing us to be a part of your day. I invite you to join these conversations by leaving feedback to this discussion in the comments below. Don't forget about our weekly club meetings each Wednesday at noon. You can participate in the Zoom meeting or follow our feed on Facebook. Until next time, remember, you are not alone. And if you feel stretched, you're just learning. Before we go, Caleb, do you have one final thought for me? Make sure you know what what kind of studying you're good at, and that will help shape the way that you're studying in general throughout your education.